Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new unboxing and impressions video. I'm excited about this one because I've waited a long time to get my hands on this. This is the Kingdom Hearts Ultimania, the story before Kingdom Hearts 3 from Dark Horse Comics. I've been dying to get my hands on this book for a while. You guys know I love gaming coffee table books. I have a collection of them. We've reviewed a bunch of them here on this channel and this one's special to me because it is Kingdom Hearts. So finally came in, it actually came in on my birthday as of yesterday from the time I'm recording this, the 29th of June, son. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this finally came in and now we get to unbox it. We get to talk about it. So as I'm taking off the plastic with this, let me know in the comments down below if you're a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Talk to me if you guys love the series. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel too, man. You know, let me know, guys, what type of stuff you guys want to see me review here on, in my videos. I'm trying to open up this plastic because I wish I had a little thing to like... Crack it open. Okay, there we go. Got it broken there. We're doing this all in real time, son. So here we go. But yeah, subscribe to the channel, son. Show me some love. Show some uh, late birthday love or Kingdom Hearts love if you're a big Kingdom Hearts fan. So anyway, looking at the back here, it comes with that little like, you know, poster thingy or little paperback thing, which I'm going to put on the inside of the book as I have it in my collection. But Ultimania, the story before Kingdom Hearts 3, it's a hardcover book collecting a lot of art and trivia leading up to the events of Kingdom Hearts 3. So that includes everything right up to, I want to say, about Dream Drop Distance, I'm guessing. Uh, they don't have a listing here of the specific games, but we're going to see it inside the book anyway. But that includes Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, uh, 358 over 2, Birth by Sleep, Rechain of Memories, uh, probably recoded as well a lot of different stuff so anyway let me put that to the side look at this front and back cover man look at this i love this we got sora on the front uh we also have riku and kairi uh in the back in their kingdom hearts versions which i'm guessing sora is the same thing here uh i will say though that maybe the white cover with the silver lining here probably wasn't the best choice because you know even on the camera sometimes it can kind of like get blinded out or just like you know washed out with the lighting uh the side it definitely looks good though it looks very sweet it looks very clean okay but it's got a nice sheen to it I, I like it but maybe i would have chosen probably a different cover art but that's just me personally but let's open up this bad boy i've been dying to get into this we got our kingdom hearts logos yeah i'm so giddy so giddy son okay so yeah kingdom hearts 3 i mean kingdom hearts the ultimania so here we go we got a timeline son we got a timeline, okay? We're already we're already starting good. You know what I'm saying? We're already starting real good. We got an official chronological timeline for all the Kingdom Hearts games, which I'm guessing, does it go to part two? No, actually, no. This is the full timeline right here. So every game before Kingdom Hearts 3, including uh, Recoded or uh, not Recoded, uh, was it Union Cross or Unchained Key, technically, whatever name that you goes by. We have uh, Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, Union Cross. I actually know it goes Union Cross because of the way that it's labeled here. We have the timeline, and then we have like the top and bottom little lines marking off where things take place. And I don't know if you guys could see this. It actually has an official how many years have passed in between games. So in between, uh, was it Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and Birth by Sleep? It's a long time. But then it's about 10 years from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep to the first Kingdom Hearts game on PlayStation 2. Uh, and then also, uh, I want to say, immediately into, which is, again, re-chain of memories or chain of memories. Then after that, it's about a year or so, it says, into Kingdom Hearts 2. And then right after, we have 358 over 2 and all the other stuff. But yeah, this is pretty dope. I like this. Leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3. And then obviously, we don't have anything with Kingdom Hearts 3 since this book came out beforehand. So what do we got in here? We got a lot. We got character files. We got encyclopedia stuff for the Keyblades. We got world guides. So all the worlds from every single game up to Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, all the enemies, an entire enemy encyclopedia. So we got Nobodies, we got, un, uh, what is it, Heartless, Unverse, Dream Eaters, Final Bosses, Secret Bosses and Side Bosses. We're definitely gonna take a look at that because there's some cool stuff in there. Uh, main story stuff, which I'm guessing is like a recap of all the stories, an art gallery. We got a secret movie collection. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know we were gonna get that. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, we got posters. Uh, what else we got? Or actually, no, there's more full of posters and this, this is just a guide of like okay what the abbreviation is inside this book so they abbreviate most of the kingdom hearts games you know with kh or whatever thing comes after it uh, it says in this book con constant common to both the original version of a game and its derivative works final mix uh, or remake editions will be referred to by the original title okay so that makes things a little bit easier but still i dig it and then Wow, we got words, we got all types of like glossary stuff. This is like, this is like, what, the, my favorite thing about this, this is like if you took the stuff from the uh, Zelda Encyclopedia, the Zelda, Zelda Hyrule Astoria or the Encyclopedia, and then applied it to this here, and then put it in like Overdrive. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I love 
from different coffee table books, man. So we got keys, we got all the different types of terms. Okay, but anyway, character files. So we're gonna go deep into the character lore, you know, some concept art. Uh, a few, I guess, sketches here of the character's face of Sora, specifically. Uh, I think it, these are also in the Kingdom Hearts uh, 1 Final Mix, or the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 collection little art book that came with it. And we got a whole bunch of stuff from throughout the series. I love this. This is dope. This is the type of stuff that I really like to see. Okay, we got Riku, of course, leading up to Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Kairi, probably the most underrated or underappreciated character in all of Kingdom Hearts because she gets a Keyblade, she still hasn't fought yet, really. She hasn't really fought yet in, in Kingdom Hearts, even in Kingdom Hearts 3, but King Mickey, our boy, our man Donald Duck, the man who does not have to heal you, by the way. Complain about healing too much? Well, maybe if you weren't bad so much, <laughs> you probably wouldn't need to be healed. <laughs> and of course, our boy Goofy. Okay, we got a whole bunch of characters. <clears throat> and one thing I will say is that I'm seeing a lot of different stuff from throughout the entire series. I'm liking all the little nods to different games, the little cutscene screenshots. I dig this. Then we get into Birth by Sleep characters. We get Vanitas, which I wish that some characters like Vanitas would probably have a little bit more here from what I'm seeing. Uh, because there's a lot of backstory and a lot of stuff going on for them in specific character in specific games, I should say. Uh, but definitely, maybe it's because we're getting more of that stuff later on in the book. But then we get all of the Organization 13 members. We get Shion. We get Riku Replica. Or I thought it was Replicant. I didn't know it was Replica. I thought it was always Replicant. But anyway, that's pretty cool to see that stuff. Um, one thing that I don't see, I don't see any of the Final Fantasy characters as far as uh, Leon, as far as Yuffie. Uh, what is it, um, Aerith? I'd be very interested if we get any other, like, little spots or not some, because maybe it's just the Kingdom Hearts exclusive characters. I would be really curious to know if that was the case. But, man, I cannot, I can't wait to just, like, dive through this whole book, like, on my own time, just, like, the go-through stuff. Because there's going to be so much I'm going to read here. So we get more of the worlds, right? So we're going to get these worlds. Uh, it's got a lot of backstory, it looks like, and they're pulling cutscenes and, and shots from multiple games. Okay, so here we go. Here's some of the characters that you meet up with. I'm guessing this is what we're probably going to see, especially when we get to Hollow Bastion. Or not Hollow Bastion, uh, what is it, uh, Traverse Town? Who's to see here? Disney Castle. We even got summons from the Kingdom Hearts series. Pretty cool. Pretty dope. And it says here, it even has their games, which uh, uh, games that you could summon them in, which is pretty dope. Uh, I didn't, I completely forgot that in Chain of Memories you could summon Cloud. That's pretty cool. Okay, now here we go. Exactly like what I was just saying. Like, here's all the Final Fantasy characters and all the guest characters you run into in Traverse Town. I like how they're, like, numbered. They got their little descriptions. They have a whole bunch of stuff in here. It says, uh, uh, Dream Drop Distance, uh, Coded, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 1. Pretty cool. Because, again, this is... Traverse Town, it only it appears in Kingdom Hearts 1. It doesn't appear in any other, uh, games as far as I know. Or I think it maybe appears in Dream Drop Distance, I think. Pretty sure where it actually says it here. Okay, so here we go. That answers my question. It shows it appears in Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, Coded, and Dream Drop Distance. So yeah, I was right that it was in Dream Drop Distance, but it was in all those other games too. Okay. But yeah, it has all these different worlds, the Olympus Coliseum. There goes our boy Sephiroth, our boy Zack. Whole lot of stuff. Now, this one has it where they're mixing some of the different games, right? Where there's two different versions of the Olympus Coliseum. We have the one in Kingdom Hearts 1, we have the one in Kingdom Hearts 2. And then we obviously have Olympus in Kingdom Hearts 3, which is really different in comparison but it has a lot in here man i'm really really digging this i cannot wait to r run through some of the actual info in here on my own time man so we're getting into some of these other worlds the end of the worlds which is the final area of kingdom hearts one and the hundred acre wood now i wonder from what it looks like it only had appears once and it has all the different versions of it that are listed here like that because hundred acre wood hundred acre wood hundred acre wood <laughs> Constantly changes with all the different mini games and stuff, but it looks like it actually mentions that in a few different things and also with the characters too. I like that. But anyway, let's speed things up because there's a lot more to kind of like glance through. I'll tell you right now, hands down, first impressions and review of like opening this up or quote unquote unboxing this, this is a must own for any Kingdom Hearts fan, straight up. Now, obviously, I know that this was translated from the Japanese version. Uh, that had been around in Japan for a long time, but like now this is the English version. So if you're a big Kingdom Hearts fan and you love this series, this is a must own. And I definitely hope that at some point they get to do another version of this that includes Kingdom Hearts 3 or whatever the next Kingdom Hearts game is going to be after that. So I'm seeing a lot of Birth by Sleep worlds, a whole bunch of world stuff. And Dream Drop, uh, Dream Drop Distance. Uh, well, I just want to double check here. Because then we get the enemy 
uh, little encyclopedia, or at least, oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second, let's, let's look at this for a second. We got the transformations, we got drive forms, that's what I'm talking about, yes, yes. We got all the little different versions that we have, or variations of Sora and crew, and his different uh, drive forms from Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh man, that's so cool, look at that. Anti-form, final form, the best form in the game. Some people would say master form because you could level it up like so easily and do like other cool stuff, but like... Final form is dope, and then limit form, which was in the final mix version. That actually wasn't in the original game, which is cool. Then we get all the enemies. It's got a labeling of all the different enemies and when they appear. Okay, I love this stuff. Again, just all these enemies. I wish that we had a, a glossary thing of it, like specific, like in-depth, like, you know, the same type of thing that they have in, in Jimmy's journal that we could have in this book. It probably would have made the book a lot more bigger, <laughs> straight up. But here we go, final bosses, the secret bosses. Look at that, Phantom. We got uh, freaking the Lingering Will, Monstro. Man, all this stuff is awesome. And it tells you, hold on, I'm trying to see if you agree. Secret boss, it is Terra's Will. Okay, it's in the graveyard. Uh, it's key play changes to forms, and such as a cannon shield and a glider to attack. Yeah, like, they've got all these, like, cool little descriptions of them, man. This is dope. This is awesome. So I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit faster now because, again, we're going to get, like, more story stuff, which is a little bit much more text-heavy from what I could tell. Talks about the entirety of the Kingdom Hearts storyline. Seems like, uh, I'm guessing this specifically, this is Birth by Sleep, so I think they're, yeah, they're going through each individual game because I just saw Kingdom Hearts 1, okay, there. Then they're doing the same thing, kind of like what they did, Kingdom Hearts Chamber Memories, kind of like what they did with the Final Fantasy Ultimanias where they broke up every single game had its own little section and divided from there. So this is pretty cool. Just kind of going through all this stuff again, going through all the games. Uh, now we get to the art gallery. And again, this might be like one of the last few things because again, this is the one of the reasons why I get this book. Look at this. Look how beautiful that promo artwork is. I still remember this the first time I saw it when I got Kingdom Hearts 1 on PlayStation 2 after seeing the commercial. Iconic. This is an iconic piece of artwork right here, especially for this series, you know, for Square Enix fans. This is awesome. There's a black and white version, a uh, uh, monochrome. This is the pretty dope like you know alternate version of that all this kingdom hearts one artwork a lot of i remember all this stuff man when it was first dropping and like appearing in, like different magazines and stuff this is crazy this is really really cool but anyway we start getting into kingdom hearts 2 i believe okay wait this is animatics okay so yeah you get like animatics and stuff related to it. so final mix the extra like bonus artwork i remember this when it finally came to the united states so a lot of cool stuff man this is chain of this is chain of memories or rechain of memories, whole bunch of stuff there. Okay, this is rechain of memories. The other thing was chain of memories, and then Kingdom Hearts two, another iconic poster there. A lot of cool stuff, man. This is this artwork is dope. This this is the iconic because this is the box art for it. This look at this. This this looks great, man. This stuff looks great. I love how clean all this stuff is. I love how just again they get like their full page spreads. So you can see it in its entire glory. Or no, look at this one. This is two because this is one piece of artwork. Even though it's kind of divided right here. Kind of like look at it kind of like that, but like this is the full piece of artwork. I wish that it was a fold out so you could just see without like the break here, but it's still pretty freaking good. Look at this, man. I don't even think I've seen this one. This is brand new. Which one's this one? Hold on. Let me, let me see this. Does it say anywhere? Uh, it's bracing. It doesn't say anything else right here, but still, I've never seen that one before. That That's new. But yeah, man, this is dope. This is dope. This is dope, dope, dope. Okay, there was a big page there. Hold on. Before I end this off i just want to i just want to look at it i just want to look at it bro i just want to look at it you, you can see i'm all like super giddy look at look at this remix this remix version of that that is so good including the kingdom hearts 2 characters so you got the original box art or the original uh display of kingdom hearts 1 with all the extra stuff afterwards man that is so cool that is so freaking cool but anyway then we get the secret movie stuff which i mentioned before the gathering all these different things man whole bunch of cool stuff and then What's this? Everything that leads into Kingdom Hearts 3. Hold on. There was that fold-out that I saw before. Let's, let's take a look at that fold-out. Where is, where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It might be afterwards. Yeah, it's afterwards. Okay, but yeah, man. Everything leads into Kingdom Hearts 3. It has all this stuff. I remember when this trailer dropped, it was hype as hell. Hype as hell. And then I'm going to read that note from Tetsuya Nomura, but still, that's dope. We got a character diagram, which is the relationship of... Uh, what is it, diagram that they had similar to the Final Fantasy Ultimanias, which is almost the exact same thing here. Just this one folds out, and it's got another fold out with the Xehanort Experience Record, which I gotta have to read. This has a lot of stuff in it, man. And then obviously the credits and stuff. So yeah, hands down, this book is a must-own, straight up. This book, you have to get this book if you are a Kingdom Hearts fan. 
Well done, Dark Horse. Really, really digging this. I cannot wait to really go through this and really get some good information from it. So anyway, that's my thoughts about the Kingdom Hearts Ultimania, the story before Kingdom Hearts 3 from Dark Horse Comics. Of course, let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoy this unboxing and impressions video. What are some of your favorite Kingdom Hearts characters? Make sure you also leave me a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and other great gaming content. I will talk to all of you. Thanks a bunch for watching the video. I really appreciate it a ton. I'll have more videos for you to enjoy here on the side that I know you'll love. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon too. Don't forget to visit my Patreon linked below for early access to new videos every week and join the Discord server too. It's linked in the description box below. You'll definitely love being a part of it. Thanks again, peace out, and stay epic everybody.